Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dominions IV, The Thrones of Ascension, Byzantine Pythium. And boy, have I got a treat for you. This is going to be an epic episode. Win, lose, or draw, crazy things are going to happen here. Things that you have not yet seen. Things that hopefully will yield really exciting battles. Now, let's talk real quick about my situation. I have no money, and as each turn goes by, I have less and less. Now, I don't know what it is. Maybe maybe there's a mistake somewhere. Maybe in one of the numbers, a, a decimal point was placed in the wrong place, but this nation is ridiculously expensive. Somehow, my upkeep is just out of control. I've been watching Tokshin's episodes and he has like three times as many troops as I do running all over the place and his upkeep is like half of what mine is and most of my troops and commanders are sacred which means they shouldn't be costing me hardly anything at all but somehow my upkeep is just through the roof so the only way I'm gonna get more money is by conquering more lands I mean all the lands that I own now are basically flooded with my own dominion they have my benefits and bonuses and so they really it's put up or shut up time I can, I can hold out indefinitely against these forces arrayed against me with my strong defensive armies and good mages, but as each turn goes by, my money is going to go further down as my expenses go up. So the deal here is we need to start conquering territories. Even if we only hold them for a short time, we need to start raiding, we need to start breaking down temples, we just need to go a little crazy. So the other thing that's worth noting is I just drank a bottle of what is called Flying Cauldron Butterscotch Beer. So, I'm a little hyped up right now, because this stuff, I swear to you, it's like drinking straight table sugar. But anyway, let's move on. We research Conjuration. What does that mean? Well, that means we get the Angel of Fury, which is the regular Pythium Angel, which is covered in blood and does what's called Blood Vengeance, which means anytime something hurts it, it hurts that same unit back by the same amount. It's really cool. But we also get the special angel summons of this particular mod of Byzantine Pythium that Burnsaber created. There are six individual unique angel summons and so we opened that but also we opened up a battle spell a battle spell called Calling of the Seventh which will summon in battle the seventh great archangel and that is a very difficult spell to cast because it requires six holy so for those of you who are counting at home, any of my normal Theurgs would require 16 slaves in order to get to that high. But luckily, Burn Saber only requires 8. So, before spoiling too much for you, let's, let's read through. Now, here's where we're very weak. Thrones. Ermor just claimed another throne. In fact, I should check this in the next part when we're checking because he might be halfway... or. Further, he might be damn near the goal of eight points. So Ermor might just win this without even fighting anyone. So that's a problem. We should check that. No new sites? Okay, battle in Elador. This is between... Well, this is me attacking Ashdod. It is, I believe, Barabel. Yes, it certainly is. And his little buddies against a pretty basic province defense force. There are a couple giant commanders with magical weapons. We'll see how it goes. And there's a lot going on in this episode, so I'm going to speed things up. Now, I'm not sure if Mirror Image is really all that worthwhile for the 10 spell points that it casts, but let me know in the comments. Maybe if you think Mirror Image is a waste and I should just go with Mist Form, Air Shield, and Blessing, that's fine too. I mean, it doesn't seem to be hurting, but it's 10 points of fatigue maybe that I don't need. And of course, Barbell was victorious. Now here is where things get a little crazy. Ermor versus Ulm. This is probably going to be the first battle you've ever seen with 750 enemy units. <laughs> yeah, so that's Ermor, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at that. I don't even know where to begin. It fills up the entire screen. We have ghouls, we have long dead legionnaires, we have heavy cavalry, we have long dead cavalry, we have knights of the sepulchre, we have barbarians, we have armed skeletons we have mound kings it's it's just and we and we have a behemoth home doesn't have a chance
I mean, it's amazing that they're not just turning tail and running right now. If you see me just looking here, it's because the the crossbowman or arbalest sprite has changed since Dominions 3, and I'm just taking a look at it because I'm not as familiar with it. But just look at this unstoppable horde. I mean, if Ermor declares war on me, I, I have no idea what the hell I'm going to do. M my whole plan has changed now in the south. Before I was moving an army down to take that Olmish castle, well, I bet you dollars to donuts that next turn Ermor, this giant forest is going to go up there and attack that castle on their own. And I'm going to let them do it. Because if I'm there and they attack, even if they don't know, because they don't know I'm there, I'm going to lose everything. Which is generally not the way I want things to go. And man, you got to hand it to Ulm here. They are not giving up. They are just fighting and fighting and fighting some more. Just, just look at this. Look at this gigantic horde. Horde. I mean, it's insane. What did they end up losing? Let's see. Well, they lost 126. Ulm beat them up pretty badly, but Ulm lost 84, including their Black Lord and their Commander of Ulm. They didn't lose one of their leaders. Okay, and Sirna. We're just going to shuffle through these. Looks like Scalaria beat Marignan. Great Feral, that is Scalaria versus us. Oh. Scalaria probably was not intending that Mayhem Dread, Mayhem, there he is, Mayhem Dread, was here in this province hanging out. Now, just like Barabel, Mayhem is a Harbinger, but unlike Barabel, he has a Firebrand. He has the, remember the blue Dragon Scale, which gives him morale, which I'm not 100% sure I'm, I'm cool with, and Cold Resistance. Then he has the boots that gives him reinvigoration and makes him stealthy, but since he isn't stealthy to begin with, it doesn't do anything for him. This just gives him a little boost to defense and protection, and this gives him regeneration. So, yeah, very good. Once he blesses himself, his hit points should go up to 40, and they have, and I believe that in the new patch, regeneration is 10% of your total hit points, not 10% of the hit points you start out with before you cast spells. So he should get four a turn in regeneration, not three. That is my belief. Please let me know if I am wrong. So my province defense is already running because they're cowards. But now the barbarians have to take a look at Mayhem. And as his name entails, Mayhem, along with our brave province defense centurion Maximus, aptly named Maximus, he took a hit for us but he's still around, are basically running these barbarians off the map. Did you see that, you guys? Mayhem just killed like four of them in one shot. Love it. Forest of Idun. Marignan got beat again. Marignan is a worthless ally. I mean, even without the Blessed, they have so many high armored troops and just really strong units. I just don't, I just don't get it. Plus, I gave them the high AI where they should have a ton of bonus to income and pr production. Giants are attacking us in province land. We have nothing here to stop them besides province defense. And yeah. I mean, they're, they're bringing the house with some giants. Not only just regular giants, but also the blue giants, which if you'll recall are fire resistant, and the red giants, red giants, which are also fire resistant. I, what's the difference? Gileadites, most numerous, spear shield, heavy scale, malice and cunning, dark arts, tip their, oh, poison. Okay, so these guys, the blue guys are just the red guys, only they have poisoned spears. Well, that's good to know. And my poor promise defense is going to get jacked. And we took out not one of them. Battle in Solam. Okay, this is a province defense province, I believe, but Scalaria is attacking me with virtually nothing. And as far as province defense goes, this one's pretty solid with heavy cav and light cav. We've already seen these guys take on a pretty decent force and win. I have faith in them now except for the heavy cab who are running away. Just like in the last battle, it's going to come down to our light cab. And just like our last battle, the light cab carries the day. Those guys need to get a raise. Alright, we're discovering sneaking enemies and killing them all over the place. And here we go. So, let's talk. We've got Mayhem, who's moving up here to engage Scalaria. 
might be a problem considering it's mostly undead, but they're weak undead. And I don't even see if they have a leader here, so this might be a good pickup for us. I have Barbell coming down here against Scalaria as well. They have living troops, so I think this one might be more in our favor. I have this force right here, weak as they are, attacking this castle again. Why am I doing so? Well, as I mentioned before, we have this new Super Angel summon, and I've converted enough of my lizards to slaves that we have exactly eight slaves. So if one of them, say this guy, were to... Well, he's not. None of them are diseased, looks like. But if any of these guys... Slave? Yeah, so they're all beat up, but they're not diseased. If I lose one, it's all over. But for at least one battle, I can see what, what life is going to be like. I'm moving out the entire force of this castle here, Ivermark, Fort Wallace, to take these guys on. I, the, the castle itself can hold for a turn, and there's nothing near it that can cause any trouble. The only force near it that can cause trouble is this one, and if they cross paths with us, we'll probably fight with them. My fear is that they go here or here, in which case we're going to have a merry chase on our hands, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. This force, as I mentioned, is not going to be sieging this castle because I'm afraid this gigantic force of 220 Ermorian troops are going to decide to do it on their own. I'm going to keep an eye on how things progress here and move accordingly, but for right now, these guys are staying put. I've moved some more slaves over, and I have one lizard set to buff the slaves, so we're not quite we're at a point where Tolmac can do anything or Yams can do anything super awesome. Yams is a hero now. I don't know if you always were. Agility. Well, not very good for Theard. So, yeah. We could, you'll see, we have one. Well, I'm, ha I'm having both these guys be slaves, too. Because they're only acolytes. So, one, two, three. Is Ninazu? I think you're a slave, right? No, Ninazu's not a slave. Okay, well, whatever. So, we could use some more slaves. We have one, two, three, four. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get Yams or Tolmac, whichever one I set, I forget which one, up to four fire, four astral, I think it's Tolmac, so four fire, four astral, four holy, and I think I have Tolmac prepared. Yeah, he's gonna cast Divine Blessing, Fanaticism, and then Phoenix Power, which will give him five fire, and then I'm gonna let him just go crazy and cast whatever he wants, hopefully falling fires, but you never know. This army, unlike the one in the north, is pretty solid. We have a ton of line troops, but still not enough to justify a thousand upkeep. That's just crazy. So I have Bim Rinky or Bit Bit Rimki moving down here to assist. Opal Warriors just recruiting troops and hanging out here. I gave Prokos here Earth Boots and an Astral Helm to give him two and two, and then the Hammer Forging to allow him to create Crystal Coins, which increase your Astral by one. The reason I'm doing this is because Thunder only has two astral and four holy. He needs four astral and three holy to summon the archangels, the um, named Byzantine archangels. And so with the hat that I'm going to take from, from Prokos and the crystal coin, he will have four exactly and he'll be able to do his business. So now let's introduce you to some new friends. We had a ton of fire gems and air gems last turn, so I put them to good use. I summoned Puggles here. Puggles is an archangel, just like... Uh, just like Dragon Strike, he has four fire and three holy, although he's sitting around because I don't have enough gems to forge items for him. And then I have the Harbinger Midare Fubuki. And I've got him a Horror Helmet, the Ice Brand, which I should be switching to Fire Brands now since it looks like Scalaria is going to be a problem, and a Vine Shield. I'm, of course, waiting for more nature to give him the Boots of Reinvigoration and some kind of armor. I can probably forge the armor. Well, I'm down on Water Gems, too. The only thing I have anything of is nature, I mean not nature, astral, and I need that of course to summon an archangel which costs 45 pearls. If I can't do that next turn I'll probably just summon an angel of fury just so I can show it to you in the following episode. We'll get there eventually, although my magic resource income is not as good as I thought it would be. I mean it looks huge, right? 10 fire, gem, or 10 fire gems, 5 air, 7 water, I mean I don't know where they're all going frankly, but there it is. So welcome to Puggles and Midare Fubuki. And also, also, Nostradamus. There he is. Nostradamus is up here. He is a water theord, so I'm excited about that because I like water. He can cast Quickness and Frozen Heart and Numbness. Every theurg that is old age that I'm not going to name is going to be called Old Theurg. So you'll notice down here we have a number of Old Theurgs. And there's Erlance. Who is not old. That's how I'm going to differentiate my heroic theurgs 
versus my old age Theurgs. And that's the story of that. I decided to attack up here instead of here because even if I win this battle, Mayhem is not going to be able to siege a castle all by himself, and this is Ulm's capital right here, I believe. So it just doesn't seem like a smart thing to do. Or this might be their... No, this is their capital, but they can get heavy troops up real quick, so that doesn't seem like a good idea. Here we're just hanging out. Again, in case Galeria attacks. And that is that. So I think we're ready now. I think we're ready to see what happens. Oh, and I moved my research to Thaumaturgy, simply because A, I can get the most bang for my buck, since it's, the, it's at the lowest, but also I'm cruising down here to get Divine Wrath, which is the spell that kills undead, blinds, and diseases everybody on the battlefield except for sacred troops. I'm going to need it eventually. Might as well have it. And I think that is all she wrote. So, all right. Here's where... Oof. A lot could happen here. We could lose some friends. We could triumph enormously, or we can be defeated ignominiously. We shall find out. And man, this butterscotch beer, holy wow, some good stuff. So a lot obviously is going on. Wow, look at all these battles in which I am personally involved. This might be a long episode. Let's see, first of all, if Feasibor, Scalaria is attacking us. This sh We should be able to wipe this up handily, and we will. It's just some ghouls against this gigantic force. We have too much time. I mean, we have too little time, so I'm not going to watch it. We killed everything, and we lost nothing. Okay, Golem range. This is... We are now attacking Scalaria. I believe this is Mayhem. It is. Okay. Hopefully all the money I spent on and gems I spent on outfitting Mayhem was not gone to waste. They moved out most of their undead, it looks like. So, whoop. Okay. So he decided to just attack them from the rear. Barbarians could potentially be trouble because they hit like a ton of bricks. So if they were to land a hit on him, it would do quite a bit of damage. But it appears as if they are failing to do so and they are running away, as they should be. And, come on, Mayhem. Experience, not yet a hero. Good fatigue, though, 23 after all that. Very happy, very pleased with that performance, Mayhem. Good work. Good work, son. Okay, now we are attacking Ashdod in Scythia. Oh, this is where we're gonna see the calling of the seventh, hopefully, with our some army that's put together with duct tape and chewing gum. A divine blessing has happened. Our slaves are starting to slave up. This is this is going to be quite interesting. More slaves. Okay. All this work against one guy. We'll probably end up killing him before we can even summon the angel. Really, just one guy. For reals? Oh man. Well, yeah, we're probably not gonna get there. Speed things up. Burn Saber just cast Divine Protection, which is another spell that requires six six holy. It gives well you can see what it does. It gives everybody protection, it gives them fire resistance, poison resistance, shock resistance. Lucky. I don't know if Misform comes with the spell or because my other guy cast it. Twist Fate. I think no, I think these were all these were all buffs that someone else cast. But either way, the, the resistances and the higher level protection. Plus it supposedly gives troops extra protection as well. I can't tell you though if that's true. It doesn't look like it is for this guy. Well, whatever. Okay, this guy needs to stay alive for just one more turn. Calling of the Seventh. Okay, it's been cast. And there he is. Holy crap. Okay, let's see here. Who is akin to the Lord? I think that should be akin. Just one word, but still. Invulnerable to 25. 
shock, fire, poison resistant, magical being, flies, need not eat, blessed, gives awe of eight. This is one of the seven archangels from the celestial sphere. The angel is the seventh, the most glorious of all archangels. He resisted the poisonous lies of Belial, withstood the plague wind of Pazuzu, endured the heat of Buur, and persisted under the blows of Belphegor to cast them all to inferno at the dawn of time. He is the warrior from heaven, whose mere name is a riddle only the righteous can answer. He is the guardian of the divine kingdom, and his tasks are great, but still he has come to do to come to this battle to protect the righteous. Armed with the spear he used to smite the four hellish lords, he will banish sinners to their rightful place. He has the serpent slayer sword, twenty-four magic damage, small area holy fire, times three versus undead demons, armor negating, holy fires, armor piercing, strength not added, six attack fire. He also has Banished to Inferno, a magical attack that does negative 12 damage. Okay, not sure not sure how that works. Maybe Burn Saber can explain it to us. And he has, look at this, 26 defense. <laughs> 82 hit points. Well, against one giant, he's not going to do too much, but still. That's a lot of fun. Oh, there he comes. I mean, he's, he's definitely cool and all. I kind of thought he might bring a few friends with him. I don't think one angel is going to be enough to, to win giant battles all by himself. But still, cool. Good to look at. Ashtod stacking us in glimmering fields. They'll probably win this. Yeah. I'm expecting so. Oh, did we lose anything in that battle? One Manticore. Our last. Glimmering Fields, they lost four Mazix and a Griffin. Elidor, they're attacking us. Okay, where Barbell just was. And I expect they will win here as well. That's the problem with raiding, is they could raid you right back, and the computer is much better at it than I am, especially with giants running around. I don't think we were able to take him take anything away from them. And we did not. See, only six troops. That's all it took. So either I spend a ton of money on province defense, or I just accept that we can't hold lands. And that makes raiding deep into enemy territory very precarious, because if they conquer the land behind me, all my angel or whatever needs to do is rout, and it dies. So that becomes a very scary prospect. And here's our big battle in the promised land. This is the first time this force has... This is the Army of the North under General Wallace. It's the first time they have left the protective walls of Fort Wallace. But we should be okay. We have a lot of slaves. We have Tokshin, I believe. And Ephanstus. There's Ephanstus. And of course there's Bonifacius Gustavus. Who is doing his bit. And... Here we have Tokshin. Where... Where is Wallace? He's here, isn't he? That might be him. Yeah, General Wallace. Okay. Very good. It's a decent army, but I think we've got this one. Yeah, we're going to cast fanaticism on these guys too, which is going to raise their morale. But that's as high, unfortunately, as this, this army can get. Not enough slaves to propel them higher. But, I mean, look at this. The giants, who used to be so tough, aren't, aren't, when my armies are prepared, you know, we're taking them down. Just these, remember now, these are our velites. These are our weakest guys, and they are killing giants. Okay, but Wallace, what the hell, man? And someone hit him already? He's down to eight hit points. I, I thought I'd command him to stay behind the troops. Gustavus knows what he's doing back there. I think Wallace is going to survive to fight another day. Or not? Oh, there he is. Okay, I was like, what the hell? I thought maybe he walked into the fire and lit himself on fire.
Okay. Ashdod has been routed. That was that was pretty tense. We lost nine Velites and four Varangians, but otherwise came through intact. We got 36 giants. And remember, this is an army basically of our weakest troops, followed up by a very few strong Varangians, not that many Vestals. Okay. Ipernia. Scalaria appears to have won yet again. Chivero. Oh, this is our attack. So this is Barbell? Yeah. And, oh, we have some Shadow Vestals to contend with. That's pretty scary. I believe they have magical weapons, do they? Yeah, a Shadow Sphere. Spear. So they can do some harm to our friend Barabel. Hopefully they will not. Hopefully he will target them before... Well, we'll find out. Okay, so far so good. Militia are running. As you can see, the undead are not impressed by his awe. But the Vestals are! Interesting! So yeah, they're not... I mean, he's good, but he's not amazing against undead. Oh, and here's a whole bunch more of them. The Vine Shield definitely helps him hold up. Boom. Good night, Scalaria. Alright, wonderful. We took out another three sneaking enemies. Apparently our enemies are sending a lot of spies against us. Although we did lo we did lose Amphotaros and Might Marsh. Didn't Might Marsh used Might Marsh used to be ours? Yeah, it must have been Ermor. Okay. Well folks. There you have it. You saw the seventh, he who is akin to God, take out one giant. Granted, I would have liked to see a bit more from him, but all right. So now it looks like Oceania again is getting into the fight here. This is just, this is like, you know that song that goes, you know that funny one where people are running in and out of doors and all that nonsense? That's pretty much how this has been so far. All these folks are going to go back home. And here's a trick. If you move to a territory, okay, and then you click where it says move, you could change it to move and patrol. So that when right when you arrive in the territory, you are patrolling already. So, pro tip there. Alright, so we have two angels here. They're having some fun, but we're not going to take on 170 undead troops with them. So, and it looks like Scalaria... Uh, defeated Ulm. Ulm is no longer sieging this castle. Mayhem is going to move here. Barbell is going to move back up here. Let's just keep them on their toes. I'm not even going to put money into province defense. At this point, I don't even care. Just want to kill people. And I believe the fortress isn't even close to being sieged. Yeah. So. It's probably smarter for us to take out this army. Although, well, see, if they come down here, then they could take, then they can just be a pain in my butt. Whereas if they attack either of these, which I'd like them to do, they probably lose. Either way, we're going to break the siege yet again. It's enough just to siege them for one turn. It keeps them from recruiting things, and we're surrounding them anyways, so that's fine. And I'm going to call this episode to a close, but... We were able to cast our Masterist Battle Spell. It's probably the best Battle Spell. Probably the one we're going to be casting every single battle from here on out. Although, again, I thought there'd be a little bit more to it. I thought maybe he'd have some buddies or little sidekick angels. Just him by himself. And I'm sure he's fantastic, but he's not any better than the thugs that we've seen before in terms of our demon lords and whatnots. But, you know, I'll take what I can get. We definitely need more troops, though. And for that, we need more money. And we still really aren't. In fact, our income was actually dropping still. It was up to about 2,000 a few turns ago. It's down to 1836 now. Our upkeep, of course, continues to rise. Looks like Ermor is still staying put here. That's where they killed our spy. So they must have been patrolling, perhaps? I'm not sure, but I want to see what they do. I mean, they're at war with Ulm. It would, it would be silly for them not to, not to come after one of these, right? I mean, I'm afraid if I attack this, they're going to attack it on the same turn and defeat me, which is something I'm trying to avoid. 
Marignan might as well not even be here. They are... I don't They're just getting killed. Ermor is not a problem against them, but they're Ermor is surrounding them because they're totally just kicking the crap out of Ulm. And Scalaria is doing a number on them too. What I would like to do eventually is move my forces up through here and hit Scalaria from the back. That that will depend on basically whether or not Ermor stays friendly because Ermor is around here somewhere. And if they stay friendly, then we're okay and we can do that. And that way I could take this throne here, this throne here, and this throne here and not necessarily raise the ire of Ermor. Let's take a look and see. Eight ascension points are required to become the new god, of which Ermor has three, four, five, six. So they're two away. That's a little troubling. Ulm has one. Scalaria has three. We have one. We, would, we used to have three, and no one has a Throne of Earth yet. We'll take it back. No, Scalaria has four. Scalaria has four. So right now, Ermor really is trouble, despite only having three thrones. Because they have, of course, the big ones. They have a level two throne and a level three throne. So we know where the Throne of the Sun is. So the, And the Throne of Bones... No, we have the lower throne. I don't know what the Throne of Bone is, but the Throne of Water. Hmm... So obviously they have this throne, which I don't know what it is, and this throne. So these are the two thrones that they have, and then they've managed to take this throne down here. So if it gets to be crazy, if they take another throne and they're almost to victory, I may just have to do a suicide march deep into their territory and try to get rid of this throne. And they have a fort on it, so that's absolutely going to be easy to do, right? To quick look at the graphs, this is Ermor. They are running away with it, but if you'll notice, well, you can't notice because you can't see, we are tied for second place with Scalaria, whom Ulm has just beaten to tar, but then Scalaria and Ermor have won their way back. Oceania is looking grim, Ashdod's looking grim, but nobody's as terrible as Marignan, and what a, just what a crappy ally they are. Forts, we are in bad shape. We are, I believe, here. So that means pretty much everybody... Even Oceania has an equal amount of forts as we do, and Marignan's the only one with lower forts. But I see, our, I see us capturing some Ashdod forts pretty soon. As you can see, Ulm has lost forts at about the same rate that Ermor has gained them. They are not winning that battle. We were for a second on top of income. Now Ashdod is on top of income, which actually makes me very happy because that means if I continue conquering their lands, my income will rise even more, which is desperately what I need. Alm's income has been hit pretty hard, or more so at the bottom. Gem income, no one touches me. I'm here, ish, and the only one who's even close to me is Scalaria. No, Ermor. Ermor's second to me, so that's somewhat troubling. And then Ashdod, which again makes me very happy, because if I conquer Ashdod, all of those yummy, yummy gems will be mine. Research. The good news is I am, if not on top, I am definitely up there with Ashdod and Scalaria. Ermor is pretty low, so they have a ton of gems, but not much to do with them. But here's where things get really interesting. Ermor and Scalaria are down here at the bottom in terms of Dominion, as is Oceania. Ashdod is at a middling rate, but we... Well, I suppose we are here somewhere. So the only person ahead of us is Ulm, and their Dominion is dropping. Ours was high for a moment and then dropped. I'm not sure what happened to cause that. Finally, army size. Now here's where you have to understand a little something, a little something about Ermor. Look at look at how much higher their army size is than everybody else. But at the same time, look at how quickly it drops. This is all chaffy, weak troops. And yes, they're overwhelming. But against a properly prepared foe, I think we could do some serious damage to them really quick. The problem, of course, is that we're down here. Now, when you compare us to the other quote unquote normal nations, we're on top. We're ahead of Ulm which weirds me out, but whatever. Ashdod, Marignan, and Oceania, with only Scalaria and Ermor ahead of us. So, that's our situation, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.